Previously on Black Book, Vasilisa found the villager that was taken by the Leshy and then had to turn detective in order to locate this Leshy to prevent this being from striking again. Looks like the village was built around barns. Makes it easier for the villagers to take grain and flour for their everyday needs. Here is where public hearings take place. It's quiet here now, except for the sounds of fir trees nudging their dead relatives with furry branches. You tell a couple of kids to gather the village. The crowd soon gathers. Why are you gathering here? To listen to the damned witch? Nonsense. Hold on. Why should we live at the mercy of the Leshy? The peasants mumble in approval. You feel uneasy from dozens of eyes looking at you with a mix of expectation, contempt, and hope. It's only recently that I've come to your village. It's clear that something is wrong here and prayers won't help. I went searching for Galina. You saved her. Thank you, Vasilisa. You hear murmurs of approval from the crowd, as well as cries of gratitude. The Forest Master is the one to blame. And he's hiding here, among you. That's why it's so easy for him to kidnap people. And I know who is to blame. They're waiting for what I say. Who among them is a Leshi? The Forest Master lives among you. That's why you can't beat back the trees. That's why people go missing so often. Your shepherd, Philemon, with no eyebrows and with the Leshi's belt, is waiting for you to curse each other. You search the crowd and see that the shepherd is here. A couple of men grab him by his belt and drag him to the center of the crowd. Philemon tries to fight, but then grows soft. You take the book and get ready to bind him with Zagavars, but he raises his eyes and you see that they have turned black. The changeling Leshi easily shrugs off his captors. A strong wind picks up, and the shepherd's figure stretches out, becomes transparent, and vanishes in the swirling fog. Otherworldly laughter is heard from the forest. The frightened villagers scatter to their homes. You clutch your book tighter and run after the Leshi. Wait, Vasilisa. I saw everything. Still can't believe my eyes. I want to help. Philemon, run that way. I may help you with something else. There is this thing. Talk faster. I don't need you in the woods. You will only get yourself killed. A wonder-working icon will come in handy to you. I blamed God for all of this, wanted to punish him. And I hid it nearby. I will take, if I have time.
you step onto a southern Nemzia field. Suddenly, your way is blocked by evil spirits. These must be Philemon's helpers.
On an old stump covered with mushrooms, you find an icon the hunter was telling you about. The frame has begun to rot, and the icon itself has gunshot marks on it. The face of the saint looks at you with reproach, as if it was you who shot it. You quickly hide the icon in the bag. The raven appears as if out of nowhere. It lands on an old cross and stares at you. The forest rustles around you. The wind disperses the fog, and for the first time in a while, you see the night sky. The raven's eyes flash red in the forest darkness. It turned out to be a shepherd, not a mother-in-law, not a plowman. Car, car. It's good that you found him. It will be easier to defeat him. He's afraid of you. Yes, but where is he? How will we find him in the forest? We've already tracked down Philemon. He went to that tree where Galena was found. Found! Turns out he has a secret underground lair there. All of those who were kidnapped are held there. There! Do you think he'll uncover Nimzia? He will! He will! You won't leave him no choice. You have the book! Black! Black! You know about it? I guessed it. Sensed it. Knew it from the start. The wind at the crossroads told me. Car! Car! How do we find the entrance to the lair? I know where it is. I know. I'll show. Go to Kulpa! Car! Car! Those who were kidnapped, are they alive? Not alive, and not dead. Our father sometimes took people, but he let him go later. Later! Someone will pray for them, or say a holy word, and then he let them go. This one keeps their soul, feeds on them. For him, their souls are like sugar. Car, car. What kind of chort are you? Maybe you're leading me into a trap. You don't know who I am? What is this strange bird that showed up at the crossroads? Was it this raven? You showed up at the crossroads. Nature listens to you, and you know the forest so well that you can follow Philemon. You're also a Leshi. Ah, you guessed it. Car, car. My name is Carnesh. I'm a Leshi's son, as well as Philemon. He's my brother. He's been hiding from me for a long time, sucking the life out of Nimzia, blocking its villagers. I couldn't track him while he was in a human form, but you helped me. Yes, you did. It is I who dragged you here from Balut. It's my figure you saw in the forest. My presence. Car, car. 
you're the reason I'm trapped here. It's not so simple, no. I was lured by the book. It led me to you. I'll help you. Only my father can break this seal on this book, and you won't find him without me. No! All right. Lead me to your brother. Go to Kulpu. I will wait for you there. The sound of wings reverberates through the old branches when the raven takes off from the old tomb. You gaze with sorrow at the crooked cross. Who was buried here, and why? Does anyone remember this old grave and the dead man within? This man was also buried outside the churchyard. These uneasy thoughts stay with you even after the grave is far behind you. Your bast shoe sinks into the freezing sludge. You have arrived at a flooded glade. After finding an old path made of rotten planks, you make it closer to your goal, but feel something wrong and stop halfway into the swamp. It looks like Philemon's chorts have set an ambush ahead. You look around. There's a man standing by the fringe of the forest, but you can't make out his face. Stop, and keep your book ready. Philemon is waiting for you by the old fir tree. A familiar raven lands beside you.
you're here already. No, Vasilisa, ho hold on, listen to me. Don't crumble me into your book. You don't understand. Car, car. Right, keep talking, brother. Speak before I change my mind. I won't lie to you, Vasilisa. Enough with the lies. I'll tell you how it is. I sometimes dragged Nimza villagers to my lair. Yes, under this tree. But not out of malice, but for a reason. I have to. Car, car, car! Father would never let it happen. Do you sorcery, Vasilisa, before it's not too late? Wait, let's listen to him. You can't understand me, Karnish. In order to avoid greater sacrifices, I have to accept lesser ones. Yes, I made it so Vorsa fell asleep, and is sleeping still. Yes, I hid Nimzia and planned to keep it hidden. For this, I need power. I need a human sacrifice. This is the price. How did you put your father to sleep and hide the village? It was difficult, but I managed it. For both of these things, I need power. I could wait until the villagers begin cursing one another and take them one by one. But it wouldn't be enough. A speck. I needed a powerful source, a flow, an avalanche of power. That's why I took on this image, a shepherd. So you took someone's skin, like a chort? That's another of the necessary sacrifices. I couldn't change my form then, as I can now. I began living in Nimzia, sowing discord, carefully, gradually. As roots pierced the stone, so I was eating through the villagers' trust in one another. I built the events in such a way that one day, a local holiday, the villagers got angry at each other. Oh, Vasilisa, it's not easy. Everyone was angry, hated each other. I won't lie. I needed potions for that, trickery, and other things. But I got what I wanted. A lot of curses were said that day. So many that all of Nemzia was cursed. That's how I managed to steal the entire village. And a dozen of cursed villagers provided enough power to put my father to sleep. So... That's how you arrange it. If only I knew. You were too busy with beasts and paid no interest to people, brother. Learn your lesson. What huge sacrifices do you want to avoid? Aren't you the reason for them in the first place? We, Leshies, can see the future. That's how I knew about your seal, even before you showed up here. We know what would await Nimzia villagers in the coming years. We can hear it in the branches, in the whisper of the wind on the crossroads. Everyone, all the Russian lands will be swept by a storm. A storm is coming. Death, famine, murder, wars await you. Maladies on such a scale that have never existed before. This village will disappear altogether. This can't be true. It is true. And my brother knows that. Everything may yet change. Ha! Huh. There haven't been such powerful omens as these for a long time. I am certain this will happen. People must choose their fate for themselves. Choose? They have no choice. They don't know what awaits them or their children. These things are written in neither the black nor the white books. The future is much scarier than your chorts, Vasilisa. That's why I decided to hide them. I will kill one, and then the other, but they will survive here with me in this fog. You're sucking this power out of the peasants? Yes, I have to kill them. This is the price. I told you what this is about, and you must support me. 
The peasants ask for help all the time, but no one listens. Only I do. You yourself know about the sacrifice required for a worthy cause. You're a witch after all. You speak beautifully, Philemon, but the people should choose for their own. Own! Own! What can they choose? Death is waiting behind each door. Only I can keep them safe. Vasilisa, they have no choice. But you do. I can set you free from the fog. I can break the seal. But I will require a sacrifice. We will take a man from Nimzia together. I'll bring you to your father, and we will break the seal. You will be free, and Nimzia will be safe. Don't listen to him, Vasilisa. He cannot decide, and neither can you. Only they can. You have to stop, Philemon. Nimzia will be free. You will be free, and my father will finally wake up. Philemon wants to keep Nemzia in the fog, and the Raven wants everyone to be free. What should I do? Which side should I choose? You speak nicely, Philemon. And your goal is noble. But people must have a choice. I won't let you kill any more villagers. That won't do. I won't let you near my tree.
Don't meddle in the business of our village. Meddle? You're the reason I'm here, and not in Vilgard. I can let you go, Vasilisa. But you will. You have no choice. Philemon sheds his skin and quickly hides among the roots of the old tree. The raven bids you to hurry before the spirit regains his powers. You pass underneath the roots. The subterranean darkness squirms around you like an army worm. When your eyes adjust to the darkness, you see that these are shadows moving about. Philemon's previous victims, still restless. They whisper endlessly, but you can't make out what they're saying. Suddenly, Philemon springs from the darkness, along with coiling tree roots. Think again, Vasilisa. You will doom the entire village. It's you who are killing it, one after the other. I won't let other peasants end up in your lair. against me, witch. You shouldn't have tried to kidnap peasants. And me.
Ghost. You won't be able to. You see what you'll fate yourself when you drag me to Nimzia. The Leshi falls to the ground hissing and disappears without a trace. You feel Philemon's sorcery disappear around you. Shadows vanish one after the other. Karnish thanks you and explains how to get to his sleeping father, outlining the necessary rituals. The Raven will wait for you there. Yashi's son told me to go north, to the old field. I better not waste any time. Every day counts.
Wisdom will enter your heart and be good for your soul. In this old, abandoned field, neither trees nor crops grow. The only things standing are old poles and two thin birches. The Leshy's son told you to tie their tops together to find the way to his father. This empty field emanates sorcerous power. You sense that there used to be a church here, or, more likely, a Permian shrine. You tie the tops of the trees together, and a portal opens between them to the domain of the Elder Leshi. There's an old birch wood near the creek. The trees are gnarly with age. Their roots covered with moss. Red ribbons are tied to their trunks, a method peasants use to aid those who have lost their way forest. These ribbons look like the ones you saw before you got to Nimzia. The ribbons lead you further along the stream. Suddenly, several drowners jump out of it, attracted by the Black Book. Thank you. 
Following the ribbons that have remained intact over the years, you find the forgotten old banyas and peek inside. Light shines through the rotten ceiling and illuminates the skeleton of a child. Judging by the leftover clothes, he was one of the Komi Yazvins, as the Nyemzya villagers say. It's hard to tell how long the body has laid here, alone and forgotten. You carry out the remains, dig out a grave, and place the bones inside. You unexpectedly pierce yourself with a bone splinter and sprinkle the burial place with blood. There's no soot or coals left in the stove. Silence surrounds you. Even the Banyaks have abandoned this place. What will Vasilisa need to do in order to get home? What of the other seals? Find out next time on Black. Like.